Um, I thought that we were over this already. I thought everyone had moved on. I know for most of us, we didn't have to move on from this relationship between Mr. and Mrs. Swiffer because we never cared to begin with. But over the last few weeks, it seems like the NFL had finally reached a point where they were willing to let it go. I don't give Roger Goodell credit for much, but I will give him credit for listening to his fan base. Over the last couple of years, it has become rare for these professional sports leagues to actually listen to their fans. Last season, the NHL ordered a double dose of woke wiener. Throughout this season, NBA fans, they have been begging for easier access to their local teams on television. What does Adam Silver do about it? Last week, he announces that the NBA is going to allow Bally Sports to continue broadcasting games for the rest of the season. The same Bally Sports that doesn't work. But to Roger Goodell's credit, he listened to his fan base. NFL fans voiced their displeasure at the constant promotion of Taylor Swiffer during games. And over the last few weeks... It really hasn't been an issue, but leave it to the Yentas on The View. <laughs> oh, my Yentas, my beauties, my whoopee cushion. Leave it to the Yentas to go all the way back to 2009, 2010, to find old tweets that were sent by Travis Kelsey and accuse him of the unforgivable sin of misogyny. You know, I thought ratings of The View, I thought the ratings were actually heading in the right direction. Earlier this season, I thought we were reaching the point where enough lonely women had found jobs or found men, and they had given up their daily habit of inhaling toxic mouth farts. When the season premiered back in September, the beauties were barely clinging to 2 million viewers. In the span of 18 months, 1 million lonely women quit watching this show. Unfortunately, whether it's due to a breakup with their significant other or perhaps they lost their jobs. Hell, maybe the batteries finally ran out in their battery-powered cucumber. Whatever the case may be, another 400,000 lonely women, they have returned to their daily habit of being brainwashed. I hate to be the bearer of bad news here, but over the last couple of weeks, The View has been averaging 2.4 million viewers. <sighs> What's going on here? ABC is never going to cancel this show if they're averaging 2.4 million. We need this number to drop below 2 million. We were heading in that direction. Everything was looking so promising. But those resilient yentas, they have found a way to bounce back. I don't understand it. I have never understood the appeal to this show. What is so appealing? What is so entertaining about watching a group of women dissect and analyze tweets from a dude that is infected with toxic masculinity when these tweets were sent out before he even hit puberty? Maybe you'll find the appeal. Maybe you'll be able to explain it to me. But before we get into that, let's get to the sponsor for today's video, my old friends at All Strokes Matter. A while back, I had a woman reach out to me asking where she could buy her husband clothes that were made by Americans for Americans. She no longer wanted to support woke clothing brands, but she wanted high quality clothes for her husband. Obviously, I don't know shit about fashion, but I do happen to know the best brand of American-made clothes, my friends over at All Strokes Matter. For all my golfers out there, All Strokes Matter just released this new style of polo shirts that I'm wearing right now. Now, of course, my personal favorites are the long sleeve tees. For all my ladies out there, All Strokes Matter also offers unisex jackets and hoodies that will keep you warm throughout the winter. All Strokes Matter has plenty of options if you're looking for ideas for the men in your family for Christmas. And if you can't decide what they would like, just buy them a gift card. Let them decide for themselves. Now, unlike the organization Black Lives Matter, All Strokes Matter actually cares about our country. These are American employees making American clothes with American materials for for American men and women. Yes, their prices are a bit higher than clothes made in a foreign sweatshop. But you know, you can't have it both ways. You can't say that you want to support American brands, American companies, and then complain about American prices. Click the link in the description below. Use my promo code BTLFANS30. That's BTLFANS in the number 30. Receive 30% 30 off of your first order of $25 or more with All Strokes Matter. All right, last Friday, the Yentas, they dedicated an entire segment to discuss an important discovery. Apparently, one of the Swiffers, and for those that don't know, fans of Taylor Swift had adopted the term Swiffer to describe themselves. It's kind of weird. I have no idea why. I mean, 
We are living in the era of the identifier. I guess fans of Taylor Swift enjoyed mops and decided they wanted to identify as Swiffers. But one of the unemployed Swiffers, who had way too much time on their hands, they decided to investigate Mr. Swiffer. Before Travis Kelsey was a famous tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs, well, KC, you are not allowed to say Chiefs. That is discrimination. My bad. Before he was a tight end for the Kansas City Guardians, Travis Kelsey was just a normal kid. He spent some of his time tweeting about what most young men tweet and think about at 20 years old. Girls. Pretty girls, sexy girls, overweight girls. Now, obviously, these tweets were not very inclusive. He wasn't tweeting about girls like Megan Rapino, who wish they were boys. But like most young men, Travis Kelsey, he enjoys looking at pretty girls. One of these dedicated Swiffers, they went all the way back to 2009, 2010, and 2011 to find some disparaging tweets that Travis Kelsey made about women. The Yint is on The View. They decided to waste five minutes talking about this violation of the woke commandments. Thou shalt not commit misogyny. Watch for yourself. He makes a few disparaging comments about women, and some of them date back to 2010 when he was like four. No, he <laughs> no. was in high school. Oh, young, oh yeah. listen, yeah. show me a high school boy who hasn't said something stupid Thank about you. Girl. How big a problem would this be for you? Well, here's one of his quotes. Mm -hmm. Damn the Clippers girls gotta be the girls that don't make the Lakers team because they was all ugly. <laughs> he's obsessed, but he's obsessed in, if they, with the girls not looking good. That was his thing. Why can't girls hide their back fat? They, they back fat. Back fat? Yeah, they're back fat. Um, I feel like if you want to be a cheerleader, I'm... you have to pass a beauty <laughs> test. There's too many ugly cheerleaders out here. What obsessed why do you with women's care? looks? What is, listen, why I do don't you care, care what I feel he thinks? I love my little, uh, uh, my, I'm a Swifty. <laughs> I do know you were Swifty. And I love her because she's getting young people out to vote. Right. Not necessarily defending Travis Kelsey because uh -huh. those are not appropriate comments, but so Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey are my age, 34. We are the generation that for the first time grew up having social media our God entire teen and adult yeah. life. And we documented everything. Gotta give people a little bit of grace. Believe it or not, I actually liked Whoopi Goldberg in this segment. Matter of fact, I liked her so much in this segment, I'm not even going to call her by her usual name, the Whoopi Cushion. For the first time, possibly ever, Whoopi Goldberg, she was not releasing uncontrollable flatulence on The View. She was actually speaking common sense and logic. What are we doing here? Why are we going back 15 years to find questionable tweets with the sole purpose of trying to ruin someone's reputation? I'm not even a fan of Travis Kelsey. I thought it was absolutely ridiculous that he agreed to promote Pfizer. For the last few years, I have found the Kansas City Guardians to be incredibly annoying because the team was associated with the dancing queen, Jackie Mahomes. As soon as they get rid of that doofus, they go out and sign Taylor Swiffer. Something annoying always seems to be happening with the Kansas City Guardians. But even with that being the case, I don't agree with going back 15 years with the sole purpose of trying to ruin someone's reputation. Obviously, Big Red Joy Behar disagrees. He called Clippers cheerleaders ugly. He is obsessed with girls looking good. That's so unfair. I have the best plastic surgeons in America, and I still don't look like the Radiant Sun Hostin. Joy Behar is 80 years old. 80! It took her 80 years to come to the realization that men like beautiful women. Joy Behar was also upset with Travis Kelsey's comments about the Lizzo. He asked why girls can't hide their back fat. It's clear to me Travis Kelsey's fat phobic. I thought it was interesting that Big Red Joy Behar was lecturing Travis Kelsey about tone deaf comments that he made 15 years ago. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Didn't Big Red make tone deaf comments about the war in Ukraine last year? I seem to remember the Yentas discussing the war and Joy Behar was very, very concerned that the conflict in Ukraine was going to interrupt her upcoming vacation to Italy. Huh. Um, how old was Joy Behar last year? 130? She wants to lecture Travis Kelsey about making questionable remarks when he was a teenager or in his early 20s, but it's perfectly fine for Joy Behar to do the same thing in her 130s? I also thought it was interesting that Joy Behar admitted to being a Swiffer. I'm a Swiffer. I love those mop handles. 
Joy Behar is not a Swiffer because she likes Taylor Swift's music. This is actually an area where me and Big Red have something in common. Just like myself, I would be willing to bet that Joy Behar doesn't know a single song that was written by Taylor Swift. Now, Taylor Swift is a very talented musician, but I'm just not into her style of music. I can't imagine that Joy Behar is either. At her age, she seems like the type that listens to the classics from the 1920s and 1930s, songs that were released back when she was in college. Joy Behar claimed to be a Swiffer because Taylor Swift influences young people to get out and vote. Which is true, which is true. Taylor Swift uses her platform to influence young people to vote. But let me ask you something. Which way do you think she is influencing them to vote? I can't imagine that Joy Behar would admit to being a Swiffer if Taylor Swift was influencing young people to vote the right way. Later in the video, AFG, Alyssa the Fairy Griffin, she said that these comments were inappropriate from Travis Kelsey and that she didn't want to defend him. Now, in her defense, she did say that we needed to give him grace, but she didn't want to defend him. My question is, why? You don't have to defend the comments, but you should defend him against the bullshit. Why are we trying to hold people accountable for something that was said 10, 15 years ago? I got a better question. Who has the time to dig through tens of thousands of tweets to find one, maybe two questionable tweets from that long ago? I'm not questioning the character of Travis Kelsey. I'm questioning the character of the person who found these tweets. That's actually what this segment on The View should have been about. This show claims to be about women empowerment. This show claims to be about girl power and helping women. Why don't you help the woman who has nothing better to do with her time than dig through Travis Kelsey's social media? To be perfectly honest with you, I was actually surprised when I watched this segment. Now, I was not surprised by Joy Behar. Her behavior was expected. But I expected that same level of fake outrage from all the women on The View. Instead, Sun Hostin was graceful. Alyssa the Fera Griffin was doing her usual shtick of playing both sides of the issue. The anonymous blonde was doing what she does best, contributing absolutely nothing to the conversation. But I was surprised by the whoopee cushion. I was surprised by Whoopi Goldberg. She was actually being sensical. She was actually using logic. I got the feeling that Whoopi Goldberg was wondering why they were wasting their time talking about this bullshit. I had the same question. Matter of fact, why does The View waste their time talking about anything at all? But give me your thoughts on this. The View dedicates an entire segment to talk about tweets that were sent by Travis Kelsey 10 or 15 years ago. Joy Behar is supposedly surprised that men like beautiful women. She wasn't the only one surprised. I'm surprised that ratings for this show are increasing. What the hell's going on here? Ratings were trending in the right direction. They were going down. Can anyone explain it? Why are ratings for The View suddenly going back up? You let me know. You tell me the appeal of this show. I don't know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate you guys and your continued support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.